Eraserhead is a 1977 film directed by David Lynch that has become a cult classic. It's known for its strange and dreamlike scenes, as well as its unique sound design. The story follows Henry Spencer, a man who finds himself in the middle of bizarre situations, including the birth of his mutant child. The film invites viewers to explore its mysterious world, leaving them with more questions than answers. As you watch, you'll find many moments that are funny, shocking, and even sad. It's a film that sticks with you, and you might find yourself thinking about it long after it's over. Now, I'm curious, when was the first time you watched Eraserhead? And what was your most memorable experience related to this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. The 1977 movie Eraserhead by David Lynch is a significant work in the history of film. It stands out for its unique storytelling and visual style. The movie's influence is seen in how it opened doors for movies that don't follow traditional plots and use striking images to tell a story. It remains relevant today because it challenges viewers to think differently about movies and storytelling. Its style has inspired many filmmakers, showing that movies can be artful and deep. Eraserhead's lasting presence in film discussions and its continued study in film classes show its ongoing importance. It is a movie that encourages people to explore new ideas and be creative, making it a lasting piece of film history. In the editing process, David Lynch decided to remove 20 minutes from his film after initial reactions to the sound levels were unfavorable. This shortened the film to 89 minutes and excluded several scenes, including one with Carlson as a midwife and another depicting a man using a car battery to harm two women, with Catherine E. Carlson portraying one of them. Additionally, a segment showing Henry with a deceased cat was omitted. The UK band Bauhaus included the song in heaven in their set list during their last tour in 1982, paying homage to the film's influence. The soundtrack holds a special dedication to the man and the planet sister. Jack Fisk, who played this character, is the brother of Lynch's ex-wife Mary Fisk. Jack's future wife, Sissy Spacek, was present on set, assisting with the slate for his scenes. Esteemed Swiss artist H.R. Giger, known for his surrealistic visuals, praised the film for its close alignment with his artistic vision, even more so than his own cinematic works. The director's unique hairstyle, notably similar to that of the film's protagonist Henry, became a distinctive visual element. Additionally, the film's influence extended into the music world, with the band The Pixies often performing the song in heaven during their live shows, showcasing the film's cultural impact beyond cinema. In the creation of this film, Jack Nance, the leading actor, expressed a casual attitude towards the underlying meaning of his work, emphasizing his view of it as just another film. The unsettling ambience that pervades the movie draws heavily from director David Lynch's own experiences living in a crime-heavy Philadelphia neighborhood, which he described as filled with violence and despair. These real-life observations directly influenced the grim setting of the film. Additionally, the production faced significant financial hurdles. The initial script's brevity, being only 20 pages, led to challenges in securing funding from the American Film Institute. Despite receiving a grant, the money ran out after three years, and efforts to attract new backers were met with skepticism, with one potential investor dismissing the film outright during a screening. In the creative process of this film, the director explored unique sound techniques, including the reversal of phonetically spoken dialogue. This method, while not featured in the final cut, would later become a signature element in another of his works, Twin Peaks. The screenplay itself was notably brief, spanning just 22 pages. The director's involvement extended beyond the typical role, as he took on multiple responsibilities including directing, writing, producing, and overseeing production design and special effects, showcasing a hands-on approach to filmmaking. In a modest studio, a dedicated team led by director David Lynch worked closely to bring a unique vision to the screen. The crew was lean, with Lynch at the helm, joined by sound designer Alan Splett, and cinematographer Herbert Cardwell, whose untimely death led to Frederick Elmy's taking over. Doreen G. Small managed production and handled props, while Catherine E. Carlson wore multiple hats, contributing in various capacities. As the film made its debut at the Filmex Festival in Los Angeles, Lynch found himself negotiating a global distribution deal with Fritz Dubeck of Library Films, all while clad in his work attire, marked by the day's labor. This period also marked the first film appearance of actor Hal Landon Jr., adding to the film's notable moments. In its opening and closing sequences, 
This film stands out by having no spoken words for significant lengths, setting a tone of isolation and introspection. The narrative is deeply personal, reflecting the director's own apprehensions about becoming a parent, influenced by his daughter's medical challenges at birth. This personal element provides the backdrop for the film's exploration of the anxieties surrounding unexpected parenthood. Additionally, the film's unique style and content have not only influenced cinema, but also popular culture, as evidenced by its parody in a sketch by a Canadian comedy group and further references in a comedian's recorded work. These elements together paint a picture of a film that has left a lasting mark on both its audience and creators. In the film, the character Henry is employed at Lapel's factory, a subtle nod to Roger Lapel, who provided early career support to the director. The production was financially supported by personal connections, including childhood friend Jack Fisk and his spouse, as well as contributions from the lead actor's wife, who worked extra hours as a waitress. The lead actor, known as John in the film, adopted the stage name Jack for his subsequent career. These personal and financial investments reflect the close-knit community that brought the film to life. Recognized for its unique storytelling and atmosphere, this film holds a place in the Criterion Collection as spine number 725. The production process was notably lengthy, with actor Jack Nance recounting a year and a half gap between scenes that seamlessly connected in the final cut. Adding to the film's distinctive sound, the lady in the radiator scene features Laurel near lips syncing to a song composed by Peter Ivers, which was specifically created for the film at the director's request. This song, In Heaven, has since become closely associated with the film's legacy. Marking the beginning of David Lynch's career in feature films, this work stands as a significant milestone. Contrary to common belief, Lynch's daughter was not born during the creation of this film. She was already growing and exploring the world, age three when preparation began and eight upon completion. The initial screening took place at the Filmex Festival in Los Angeles, drawing a modest audience that slightly grew the next night. The film's journey continued, finding a home as a midnight showing at Cinema Village in New York, thanks to Ben Barinholtz of Libra Films International. This led to extended runs in prominent theaters across New York, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, securing its place in cinema history. During the making of this film, director David Lynch embraced transcendental meditation, which led to significant lifestyle changes such as adopting vegetarianism and quitting smoking and alcohol. The film's opening scenes feature Henry navigating a bleak urban environment, which has since been transformed into the site of the Beverly Center Mall, a stark contrast to its previous depiction. Recognized for its significance in cinema, the film has been listed in the 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, a testament to its lasting relevance and influence in the film industry.